uh, uh, and present this uh, uh, wonderful uh, uh, story about Laurdan, which is at the end of the end, uh, a family story. And, and, and you will see why this is a family story. Well, um, let me see, I need to put my pointer here. Okay, well, it's a family story because there are a lot of people connected. Uh, originally, this group of guys that involve dimethylamino naphthalene were synthesized by Gregorio Walker and Ferris. And I want to tell the story that Faye Ferry was not a scientist, uh, but she was the person who synthesized when Gregorio had uh, a problem with the vision. And she was doing all the cooking uh, to produce this wonderful group of probes that really uh, enable us to do fantastic things in biology. Uh, and these dyes were synthesized very early in the late 70s, but until the 80s was basically, the Laurdan was dormant, no, no, no much, uh, there was no use. And uh, on the early 80s, Enrico and Tiziana Parasasi, who is here, this is the picture I found of her, were beginning of working with, with Laurdan in cuvettes. So doing experiment of membranes in cuvettes. And after that, you know, in the time for the, uh, I will say, the late uh, 90s, Susana Sanchez and Luis Bagatoli, uh, uh, an Argentinian person, a Cordobes, uh, were working on moving most of the stuff that was done and was learned from the cuvettes to the imaging. And I have the, you know, uh, the, 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 um, opportunity to join to this family later on and contribute with the phasers and the application of spectral and lifetime phasor of the on Laurdan studies. Uh, so in numbers, Laurdan is one of the molecules, uh, fluorescent molecules that have used most for membrane dynamics in vivo in cells. And this is just a, 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 a quick search of uh, the Laurdan war in Palmed, and we have above 600 results. And you will see over the time from the early 80s to nowadays, the number of, of uh, papers. And this is one of the big values of Laurdan. So many people use it, and we learn a lot about how Laurdan works and how we can interpret, how we can give you know, uh, um, uh, an idea of what is going on, uh, and so far, what I have to say uh, that Laurdan is unique because of this, because many people use it, and there is uh, a lot, a lot of effort to understand the fundamentals of the photophysics of Laurdan, which is absolutely exquisite. There are many other new dyes uh, that wanted to, you know, at some point try to solve issues that Laurdan can have. For example, see, Laurdan was a probe synthesized by Kim and other authors uh, in the 2000s. And it's a wonderful probe, uh, but it still is under study, I will say, because after a decade or so, we have only uh, you know, a couple of tens papers, or 20 or 30 papers of using C. Laurdan. And the same is true for some other. Uh, this is a dye synthesized by Leslie Lowen, and there is, you know, on the 60 papers, it's a fantastic dye that fluoresces more in the green spectra. But still the difficulty is that you don't have all the literature and the study that we have for Lorda. And I want to go through this quick because we already uh, talked today in the morning, but I want to say uh, or make a point on, on stress some things. So, the beauty of, of, of this molecule is, you see, this is the cover of uh, Dave Jason book. So this is Lordan in uh, glycerol at frozen temperature, so minus 80. And this is in room temperature or, or a little higher of room temperature. You don't need any fluorometer, any uh, lifetime machine or whatever to say what is going on here. So there is a, a, a redshift. And this is because relaxation of glycerol in this sample. 
So you can see with your eyes. And this is illuminated with a hand lamp, UV hand lamp. So this is really a beauty of, of these dyes. And I want to say that uh, uh, in words of uh, Dave Jason, he told me that Gregorio Weber used to say that Prodan was a gift uh, from God. Uh, uh, I'm not a religion person, but I have to say that all damn props are a gift of Gregorio Weber. And the exquisite photophysic enables you to have a increase in this dipole moment that can be used to sense the environment. And can be used to sense the environment in two different parameters, which are similar and influenceable each of the other, but they are not the same. So if you don't have dipole active molecules around the dye, but you have changes in the, uh, the electric constant, larger than we shift the spectra. And this is polarity related. But if you have dipole active molecules like glycerol or water or whatever, larger than we shift too, but now through the reorganization. So the spending of energy of reorganizing this molecule around it. These two parameters, can be analyzed together when we collect an spectra, but also can be analyzed independently when we collect lifetime. Because if we isolate the blue emission or the green emission of Laurdan, we can in some way uh, analyze the polarity of the environment and then the relaxation. And I didn't mention, uh, I don't know if this came up early in the morning, but when we have relaxation, what happens is this takes time because you need to move the probes, well, the probes, no, the molecules around the dye. And this moving takes times. So when we look at relaxation in the phase source, implies that the points will be out of the universal cycle. If we have a linear combination, we'll be in. If we have single exponential, we'll be on the universal cycle. If we have relaxation, it always will come up outside the universal cycle. And it's a fingerprint, you can immediately tell, yes, you have a reaction in the excited state. And this is because, I don't know, you have bipolar relaxation, you are watching at the fret acceptor, or you have excimers for it. Uh, saying so, this is important because in some of the part that I will talk today, uh, I will stress the blue and the green part of the lifetime. And we will use either uh, lifetime information and also spectral information. But before I go through, I want to explain the details of why Laurdan is so special. Why Laurdan is so special because it's located in a particular region of the membrane, which is not the same of the prodan. You can see that it's a little bit up. And we will see it's not the same for all the other variants of Laurdan. It's not the same. And thanks of, you know, uh, and uh, uh, Gregory Weber put a Lauril group here and not other group, we are able to sense few molecules of water here at the interface. And this molecule of water has constraint in the rotation. And these constraints in the rotation is, are more or less in the time on the lifetime. So relaxation compete with the lifetime. And this is very, very important. If you go a little bit outside, like Prodan, you don't have the same time relaxation for water because it's outside and the water move fast outside in the membrane. And this is an important thing. When we compare result from Laurdan, C. Laurdan or Prodan, we need to take this into, into account because you will not see the same. You will see on average change in fluidity, but you will not see relaxation as you are able to see on the um, membrane. The other important thing is when we speak ab about these two variables, relaxation and polarity, we need to take care of the physical model of we are what we are studying. In the membrane for Laurdan, we have defined and finite physical model. We can have membranes in the liquid order, shell or liquid disorder. We don't have continuous change in membrane. We have discrete because these are degrees of freedom that define the proper order of the membrane. Well, when we talk about polarity, this means that we will have membranes on disorder, shell, or disorder, order, or combination of the three. Polarity should be a discrete variable. Dipolar relaxation not, because in the dipolar relaxation, we can have only few water molecules. And this is the model of the cavity that I highlight here. 
this model of the cavity was basically an analysis and calculation that in this paper, Parasasi and Enrico introduced the idea of only three molecules are responsible for all this change. So from zero to three molecules. Well, I already say that we can follow the change in the melting transition on the membrane, and this will be very useful for our studies. And, uh, and we already went through of the calculation. The reason for why I want to say this again is well, because I want to highlight that the, the early person who shift from the cuvette experiment to the imaging experiment was Luis Bagatoli uh, during his postdoc with Enrico. Uh, and basically they did all this wonderful contribution and they in, start to see on the uh, imaging, basically the possibility of watching domains. Because at that, at that point, probably 20 years ago, we know, we knew that there was, you know, domains, but we, were, we weren't able to see the micro domains, so liquid order, liquid disorder, and all the theory that came back came after this with the lipid wrap and everything. And they show for the first time this. Uh, then um, I want to go a little bit on discuss this of the how special this la this Laura molecule is. Well, it's so special because this location, and I want to stress something that sometimes I have to discuss in in in, in conference or, or or with people or colleagues, which is. Most of the people tell that Laudan is poor in photophysics because it bleach when you use 405 excitation. The problem is 405 excitation is not a good light for Laudan because you will excite just at the red edge of the excitation spectra of Laudan. So you need to excite Laudan more or less on the 360, which is not, not recommended for in vivo experiment and more Importantly, it's not that easy to have instrumentation that enable you to work with this ultra LED light because most of the glass does not transmit this light. So the most uh, ap the most important application of Lardan are done with basically um, basically uh, with uh, two photon excitation. Uh, and Kim and other authors produce this C Lardan like more or less 10 years ago or something like that. And I would like to highlight this paper from uh, Valeria Levy and Martin Dodes, who was a student of Valeria Levy at that time, where they use Laurdan. In the original paper, they claim for, you know, two photon excitation, which was, well, the proper excitation to do it. But they discover, and this is something that Valeria contributed, that C. Laurdan was more stable at the excitation of 405 and enabled them to work with uh, C. Laurdan in uh, in vivo or in vitro with GUVs and even with cells using 405 excitation. And this is cool, uh, but if you look carefully, uh, I, don't, I don't know if you can catch this here, when you see at the transition phase of the Laurdan, which is the black line here, you see that there is nothing, there is no bump in, the, in the, this part here that I am signaling. But if you look at the at the here in the bottom in the white in the C Laurdan, you see that there is a little bump in the phase transition. This little bump is the ripple phase that is only captured at the interface of the membrane. So it's telling you that C Laurdan is not in the same place of Laurdan when you are in a membrane. And when when I discuss with people, well, you know, Laurdan does not behave, and I want to use this other probe uh, because it's better for my system, I always say the same, it's okay, it's perfect. There is no issue with that, but you have to take this into account because you cannot extrapolate everything that you learn from Laurdan to Laurdan or any other dye. Um, okay, so then I'm going to uh, present a little bit of the history that we uh, count in this paper this is a, a perspective paper that we published last year uh, with Susana, with Enrico, with Dave, and also with Herman Goodner. And it tells basically that you can approach Laurdan 
from different uh, uh, techniques. And all the techniques are valid. This is the first thing that I want to say, I want to claim. There is no one better than the other. Of course, you can take different information from one and the other. And what you need to learn is, well, what is information that you can take from each and you will use whatever is worth for what you want to do. So in this basically revision, basically we cover all the things that are related, you know, for the early GP measurement, and then the fluctuation combination with GP and also the Laurdan with the lifetime or with the spectral information. So first of all, at the very early uh, days when we moved to imaging, uh, we were able to do GP. And with the GP, you can see here that if you have a GUV, giant unilever vesicle with the coexistence of two phases, you can see here the change in the intensity. And this change in the intensity is due to the change in the quantum yield of the Laurdan, you can just by watching the intensity, you can tell that one environment is more packed than the other because you quench less the probe. But if you do the calculation of the GP, you can immediately see, you know, this domain is order and this domain is this, the rest of the GUV is fluid. But then we begin to use Laurdan for cells and the GP average uh, and the GP coverage was a method that it was uh, developed in order to, you know, if you have a GP, you can propose like two component because we are speaking about membrane. And again, membrane has a physical moment behind that tell you is liquid order, is liquid disorder. So I have distribution for liquid order, a distribution for liquid disorder. It's not a continuum, right? And if you do so, you can quantify this and you can quantify region of low GP or high GP besides of the average value. And this is basically the same result, analyze it in a region of interest or in an average. And you can see that you can take advantage information when you do, 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 do this calculation. Then I want to highlight uh, what I didn't say. This, this, this is uh, information from Susana Sanchez uh, research uh, in uh, a particularly um, type of cell, these are HeLa, and they were, you know, studying something related to, you know, uh, some uh, detergent of uh, how the detergent modify the, the membrane. Uh, then early, more recent in the time, uh, Susana did another contribution, which was very, very important. If we can scan in a circle on the interface of the membrane, this is a, an erythrocyte. So this is, a, you know, a, a complex sample. And we can measure two uh, intensities in parallel. So the blue and the green channel for the GP. So we collect the fluctuation in one channel, the fluctuation in the other channel. And then we do the calculation. So this is, this, this, this is called a carpet. So you have basically the intensity over time. And this line represents one of the uh, points where the orbital cycle is passing through the membrane one time, another, 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 another. So this is the orbit length, so zero to 64, and then you have all the time for all the orbits, one and another. If we calculate the green and the blue, and then we calculate the GP, which is not basically the fluctuation in intensity in one channel or another. Now it's the fluctuation in the GP function. What we can do is uh, autocorrelate this fluctuation and take information about how the domains are, are passing through the volume of the excitation. And if the domains are below the PSF, we can see this fluctuation in the GP. And this is very valuable because without uh, um, having resolution to see the domain, we can still determine the size of the domain. And this is what is represented in this uh, you know, plot here and they propose an interpretation of how the distribution of the domain was, uh, you know, uh, organizes, and it's a beautiful work uh, published in, in PNAS. If you go to the uh, review, uh, you will find all the literature related to this. And then came the era of the phasers, and this was when I joined the team, and uh, basically, uh, I don't need to cover now that we can do FLIM in time domain or in frequency domain, and either way we can do phasers. 
And we know that now the universal cycle is very important. And what we learn new now is that if we have position outside the universal cycle, it means that we have dipolar relaxations. And we know this reciprocity principle and the linear combination. And the spectral phasor was already covered today in the morning. And these are some pictures from my PhD thesis. And you can use in cell and select different uh, uh, fraction of order and fluid membrane and, 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 and many more things. Uh, so I already say, well, either way, spectral or lifetime, we can do phasers. The last thing that I want to introduce about the techniques before to uh, uh, go to the uh, results that I want to discuss with you uh, is basically a method that Enrico mentioned today in the morning, which is the multidimensional phaser. So if we can acquire either in parallel or one after another, but in a very short uh, uh, period of time, the information from uh, the information from oh, shit. Okay, the information from uh, you know the spectra or the lifetime for a same image, we can think about and we can obtain the phasor for the spectra and the phasor for the lifetime, right? And what is in common? In common is the same region of interest, right? It's the image that is equal for both, right? Well, if this is true, what we can do next is to try to use the phasor because this is common image and we can go in that direction and we can go in that direction, but, but nothing inhibit us to go from this direction to this one and then back to this one or both ways. And this is what the multidimensional phasor does basically we select a region of interest in our spectral phasor we call the master phasor and we highlight region of interest in our image common image and then we ask to our uh, software well where are the, the pixel that we highlight now in the image in our secondary phase with this we can combine many images we can combine spectral with two lifetime we can combine compare many different excitation with the spectra and lifetime and isotropy. We can combine any dimension we want with the multidimensional phase through the common image and through the phasor calculation. So just to show how this work, uh, uh, you know, these are uh, NAH cell and we stain it with Ardan and you see that if you highlight the blue here, it should highlight the longer lifetime here because it's order. And if you do the, green, the red here, it should highlight the shorter lifetime because it should be a shrink in the time, the decay for the fluid. And then you have in green, you know, the linear combination between one and another. And if we look at the, at the uh, green channel, you can see that the pixels move out outside the universal cycle. This is the dipolar relaxation. So something happening in the excited state. Well, if we do segmentation because we have an image, we can also basically segment a region of interest in an image and see how now clarify the situation. And you see that the broad cluster now is very uh, 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 narrow and you can see much better now here the linear combination as well as the dipolar relaxation. And if we go to the membrane, it's even easier because in the membrane, you don't have many pixels in red most of the pixels are either as a, you know, more order or a fraction of order and fluid, which is what we expect uh, in, the, in the plasma membrane. So I told, basically, I introduced this because I want to tell a, a, a group of results that we uh, did when I was in the postdoc in California, uh, and we were trying to, you know, uh, understand the effect of the hydrogen peroxide in membrane. Uh, the hydrogen peroxide uh, is uh, a ubiquitinous molecule uh, that can basically be in different region up to cellular level. You know, depending on the level of the uh, uh, hydrogen peroxide, so the amount of hydrogen peroxide can produce damage or signaling, uh, which is called as uh, oxidative stress or uh, use stress. And what is really a, surprised me or amazing to me because I don't know much about the biology of this is that you know the concentration within the cell is really really controlled 
And there is a strong gradient between the extracellular and intracellular concentration, more or less a thousand times, because we have a battery, a, a whole group of enzymes who are intended to detoxify, so to remove you know, the hydrogen peroxide, but not only to detoxify, but also to use the hydrogen peroxide as a signaling molecule. Uh, and they can react with really amazing speed, like the peroxyredoxine, and we have an expert here, so I, I'm not going to do say much about this, um, but we have others which reacts at a, a, a lower speed. And there are two models about how the hydrogen peroxide work inside the cell, another model, which is called the fluid gate, where, which means that if you have, you know, really high level of hydrogen peroxide, you will start to oxide, you know, what the reacts uh, slow, and then you, you will continue uh, oxidizing the others. And basically, depending of how much hy hydrogen peroxide you have, you will be able to, to oxidize the thiols in the fast or in the uh, slower reaction uh, enzyme. But more recently, and I think this is taking absolutely now the control of the scene in the hydrogen peroxide, is that the peroxyredoxine are the responsible for transfer the information of the uh, oxidation through thiols. And basically, uh, they are the one that decide where the signal is going or not. Uh, what really attracted me to me is that the hydrogen peroxide can change fluidity in membranes. Uh, at least in yeast, there was a paper at that point that shows that the membrane can be, you know, modified and the, uh, basically the, the phospholipid profile has modified and the sterol profile was also modified. So with this, basically, we will acquire lifetime and spectra, and we will do all what we uh, discussed before. The experiment was quite easy. So we culture NAH333 cells, sorry. Uh, and then we you know, incubate with uh, uh, hydrogen peroxide, and then we measure at different times. Uh, and basically, we acquire uh, on a microscope we are using two photon excitation, flim, and hyperspectral image. So before to go in the details, I want to stress how we did analysis. Well, the analysis was done calculating the phasor for the channel one, which is the blue part of the fluorescent emission of Laurdan, channel two, which is the green part of the fluorescent emission of Laurdan, and spectra. And for the analysis, we use these three components that uh, uh, Suman just explained before. Uh, basically, we place for the uh, single component of, of uh, fluid membrane or liquid order membrane, and then we place this position outside, which will reveal the dipolar relaxation change in the sample because it's showing how the phase is changing, right? And for the calculation, basically we, we calculate the histogram for one dimension and the other. So one dimension will be this one, which is fluidity, and the other dimension will be this one, which is dipolar relaxation. With this histogram, we will calculate basically the uh, center of mass, and we will compare in a statistical way the comparison between one and another. So this is the first result. So basically when we treat the cells, we will obtain a fluidity image and the polar relaxation image. And we will see, we, we can see here that there, is, there was not much change between you know, the treatment with hydrogen peroxide when we analyze the whole cell. And this is also not quantitatively significant between the center of mass of the histogram. This histogram was calculated for each of the cell that we analyze, and then we have an average value. And this is a standard deviation for the whole cells. What captured my attention was that the dipolar relaxation does, and this was completely unexpected and because we should not have dipolar relaxation in the polarity. We should have dipolar relaxation in the green channel. I repeat this many times. And well, at the end, I convinced that there was a change in dipolar relaxation when we treat the cell with hydrogen peroxide, right? In the blue channel. And we will come back to this at the end of the talk because there is a discussion. Well, then we analyze using or taking advantage that we collect an image and we segmented 
an arbitrary segmentation of the plasma membrane, so a region which we assign where the plasma membrane should be because we are cutting the cell. When we do that, this was not significant before between the, 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 the experiment, but now it's strong significant, which tell us that the effect of the hydrogen peroxide was on the plasma membrane and not in the intracellular space. Uh, and we decrease the concentration because one of the reviewers requested, and we still see the effect uh, on, the, on the hydrogen peroxide in the plasma membrane. Then we did the same for the analysis of the green challenge, and it shows there was a, a strong effect in the phase, so showing that the environment in the, uh, in the cells, the plasma membrane environment in the cell treated with hydrogen peroxide increases the dipolar relaxation, which means that the cells are becoming more, more uh, relaxed, right? Um, one thing that I want to say before on that is that the shift here in the plasma membrane uh, is showing that instead of you know changing in the direction in the blue channel, instead of changing the direction of the fluidity, the membrane are getting more rigid. So this is controversial because you have rigid membrane but higher dipolar relaxation, and keeps this in mind because we will come back to this in the next uh, slide. So then we went to the uh, dipolar relaxation channel. And in the dipolar relaxation channel, uh, in the fluidity, we saw change in the fluidity again by decreasing the fluidity. And, um, and then we, um, and then we calculate the dipolar relaxation and this was really strong significant, really strong significant, right? So there was a huge increase in dipolar relaxation in the treated cell. Uh, yes, I think when we did the same now, but for the plasma membrane analysis, all the results were even stronger in the statistical analysis, right? The cells be are becoming more ordered, but the relaxation is getting higher and higher, right? So the thing was, okay, we got also spectral data, and let's see what the spectral da data tell us. So with the spectral data, what we can see is that if we analyze from you know, liquid order to liquid disorder, and we calculate you know, the fraction of liquid order, what we can see is that there is an increase you know, in the organization of the membrane after uh, the treatment with hydrogen peroxide, and this in some point, uh, uh, you know, uh, support what we got before from the lifetime. But there is an incongruence here, which is, okay, how the membrane, how can be that the membrane are decreasing, well, increasing the organization, so make, make the cell more order in the plasma membrane, but at the same time, increasing the dipolar relaxation, which is the penetration of water at the interface of the membrane. This is the other way around. Usually, is when you have increasing the fluidity, the water can get deep, all right? And you can have more molecules in this cavity molecule model to be relaxed. Well, we, considering that we got basically a uh, lifetime and spectra, we can do multidimensional phasor. And let's see if multidimensional phasor can tell us that we cannot tell using only lifetime or only spectra. And what this tell us is uh, basically that if this, this is the control situation, and in the control situation was very easy to see that if you highlight a region of interest in the, um, you know, in the uh, uh, liquid order, as, as we call, it will, you know, show in the, uh, in the um, spectra, the region which is assigned to the more order membrane. And if you go to the other way around, is uh, basically when it's fluid, you see basically more, more, more order, um, more fluidity here, right? The thing is, what happened when we go to the hydrogen peroxide? Well, when we go to the hydrogen peroxide, what we can see is that if we highlight in the dipolar relaxation, the pixels who are outside the universal cycle, they correspond 
to the pixels who are at the limit of the uh, channel one, but a little bit out in comparison with the control. So what is telling us is that in the hydrogen peroxide, there are dipolar relaxation, right? Or there are processes in which we can see dipolar relaxation in the blue channel. And how this can be possible? Well, if we think about, uh, about the situation that can give you, you know, as a, 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 the possibility of get excited in the outer membrane and fluoresce in the fluid membrane, this can be happening when we have a, a, a process that is called fast interconversion of Laurdan. And this is due to the translational diffusion between domains who are very, very narrow. Uh, how this can be possible? Well, the thing is, uh, this process was described before, and this is again something that I say at the beginning that, you know, Laurdan was a molecule that we study a lot, and Tiziana and Enrico was demonstrated that this, possible, this, this process was possible in vitro, and it happened when you have shell domains, because shell domain can take any kind of shape. And most of the time, they are like fibers, right? And this is the schematic that we have here. So if you have shell domains, and you excite a molecule in the shell domain, but it's so narrow that the diffusion of the Laurdan can excite in one domain, but emit in the other, what you will see is the fact that we saw in the um, hydrogen peroxide situation. So we can have relaxation in the blue channel, which is unexpected because the thing is the relaxation it will happen after the excitation, not before the excitation, right? Um, how this can be possible in, a, in vivo? situation. Well, this can be possible because if we have uh, uh, in consideration that the hydrogen peroxide is a signaling molecule, what, what I learned is that the hydrogen peroxide is activator of protein kinase C and phospholipase D. And phospholipase D is the molecule, is the enzyme, sorry, which basically cut the head of the phospholipids and produce Fosfatidic acid. If you, sorry, if you have this issue, if you have this situation, you will have a strong change in the uh, membrane organization and you will have almost like 10 uh, degrees of shift in the transition melting and you will have shell membrane in, in, in cells. Just in the last minute that I have, I want to highlight that with uh, Susana and with Germán and with Vicente Castillo, Castro Castillo, uh, they synthesized a probe who was inspired, of course, by Laurdan. So it's a dimethyl uh, anthracene, right? With the uh, Caprida group. And we show that it's sensitive to uh, solvatochromy and it's also sensitive to membrane order. And we can use either in clean, and you can see in the red channel that it can have position outside universal cycle. So it's also possible to see the polar relaxation. We can also do uh, spectra and spectral phasor, of course, and it can be excited using 488 uh, excitation instead of, you know, multi-photon excitation, but can be used in both, both directions. 